Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Greetings, everyone. We give praise to Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya, and our Donna Yache, Meshiaga, and our mother, Ruaka Kwadoshi. We hope you all are enjoying the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yeah. Today, we're going to be discussing the scriptures on understanding the new covenant. The word for covenant in the Hebrew scriptures is H1285, and it means in the sense of cutting a compact because made by passing between pieces of flesh is cutting of meat something has to be cut a confederacy or a covenant or a league this helps us understand and know that covenants are done by blood because you have to shed the blood of the covenant now let's look at the first covenant hebrews chapter 9 verse 18 to 21 hebrews chapter 9 verse 18 Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Mushi had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats and water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which Elohim hath enjoined unto you. All right. So this is the first covenant. The word testament means covenant as well when you look at the Greek definition. Let's continue. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. All right, so everything sanctified with blood. Now, let's look at the new covenant. Hebrews 8 and 7. Yes, Hebrews 8, verse 7 to 10, please. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Adonai. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yoda, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, but they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Ahia. So at that time, our fathers, the blood of the covenant was sprinkled on them, and they were given the words of the covenant, which is what the commandments. It was written on stones. And it was given to them. He spoke it unto them, but they kept it not because the blood of bulls and rams could not purge their conscience. They were still bearing the same guilt and iniquity from what they had picked up in the past. Continue. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Ahia. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them are Elohim, and they shall be my people. So you see the new covenant through Yahweh's blood of sanctification is putting the laws within us now. Instead of on stones, now it's coming within so that we can actually keep it from the heart. So look at Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6 and 7, please. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. I, Ahiah, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee. Notice that I will hold thy hand, I will keep thee. Because it was the Ahaya that kept Yahweh strong to endure even unto death. And this is encouraging for us to know that it's Yahweh in us by the power of Ahaya. Because he's doing all things that he's seen of the Father and all things that the Father has done, he do it. The Father strengthened him and enabled him to endure unto death, to inherit the kingdom. Therefore, Yahweh is working in us and holding our hands that we may endure unto the death of ourselves and be new creatures in him and partake in the eternal life of Allah Hayyam. All right, continue. And give thee for a covenant of the people. And give thee for a covenant. Yache literally is the covenant. He literally is the blood that was shed for this new covenant. For a light of the Gentiles. So he was given for a covenant of the people. That's why he said in the book of the New Testament, he said, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because right. he had to die for us. Because we had to be atoned for since we had received the law and didn't keep it. And also, as it is written, for a light to the Gentiles, he would awaken his people and put his spirit in them. And they will become a light that the Gentiles may be saved by seeing Meshiach Yache in his people. And that they the Gentiles may put on Mishiach Ayache as well. All right, continue verse 7. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, 
and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. And this was the covenant. Yache understood the commandment given him that he was to be a sacrifice because a covenant is by blood. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 through 10, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. He actually understood what the Hayat told him when he said, I would give thee for a covenant. Right. Let's continue. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O Elohim. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the animal sacrifices, the Levitical priesthood law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Elohim. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Mashiach once for all. Now let's look at John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 to see that he was speaking of these things even before anyone understood it. John chapter 2, verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahweh saith unto them, They have no wine. Yahweh saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Now we know Yache is a true wine. Right. Because his drink is drink indeed, and his meat is meat indeed. That's why Yache answered. He said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. <laughs> She's speaking of the wine for the people at the feast. Like carnal. Right. But he's talking about the wine that would actually give them life <laughs> when he had to die. John 13 and 1, his hour was the time of his sacrifice to give his blood for the true wine, the blood of the New Testament, according to Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 and 28. We can read that, please. Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. And he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Look at John 5, 36 to 40. John chapter 5, verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works of which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. All this book is speaking of Adonai Yache. Right. And you would not come to me, that ye might have life. It's quite a testimony, because we read the book, yet we don't see that we actually have to put on his yoke. Right. He said, you don't come to me that ye may have life. If we don't bear the fruits of the Spirit, we have not come to Him. If we don't walk in sincerity and truth with meekness, we have not come to Him. And don't know how testified of these things. May it be admonition for us, of all nations, to come unto Him and put on His yoke and His burden, which is light, according to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. He is preaching this covenant of righteousness to us too even to this day according to the scriptures it's in let's look at psalms chapter 40 verse 7 to 10. psalms chapter 40 verse 7. then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me a delight to do thy will o my Elohim. yea thy law is within my heart and we see the new covenant <laughs> thy law is within my heart Continue. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. This is what he's preaching. This is the true gospel. Continue. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Ahaya, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. 
I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. The ones in the congregation of the church will work his righteousness by sacrificing covenant with him, Jew and Gentile, and be accounted saints, members of the true church. And let's look at Psalms 50, verse 5 to 15, and verse 23. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for Allah I am a judge himself. Yeah. Shall I? We have to be living sacrifices to be saints. Right. If we don't keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit by believing in Yahweh, we're not saints. Right. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am Elohim, even thy Elohim. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. It's amazing now it makes understanding the psalm easier. Right. Because we were supposed to be living sacrifices. He's not going to reprove us about those carnal sacrifices because that's not where the salvation was. And continue. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goes out of thy foes. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, would I not tell thee? For the world is mine in the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Was it really about animal sacrifices? No, continue. Offer unto Allah I am thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto Alluvia on them, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. We have this great hope and this great assurance that we call upon him in the day of trouble when we're being afflicted and tempted to sin, whether in spirit or in the flesh, because we, we have to be mindful not to sin in our minds either. Right. He said, call upon him. That's the lesson on obedience is a war of the mind. When right. the enemy attacks, call upon Allah. Right. Call upon the salvation of Israel. Call upon Yache. When we call upon him, the devil will flee. Right. We're going to work what is right. And when we work what is right, <laughs> we're going to glorify him. Sure. This is the great hope and the great calling of Allah. Continue. Whoso offers praise glorifies me. That's verse 23 that we jump to there. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of Elohim. So we can see how him that turneth aright, orders his conversation, or speaking right things, doing right things, right. him shall I show the salvation of Elohim. Who is the salvation of Elohim? Gotcha. <laughs> so we see how we will see him. Right. Order our conversation aright, doing that which is pleasing. And we shall see our Adonah. The veil will be removed off of our face. And we shall see Adonah Yache, the king of glory. Wow. He fulfilled the work that the Father gave him to do by being the covenant of the people through sacrifice. Let's look at Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. He came to fulfill. Let's look at... Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 48, to see that he was talking about the sacrifice. Okay. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Mushi, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Meshiach to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Yorochalam. And ye are witnesses of these things. And there we see he came to fulfill the sacrifice, right. the covenant. His blood had to be shed. He had to be the atonement. And it was known that he would die before the Shabbat came in, not on the Shabbat day. There are doctrines that are saying that he died on the Shabbat. That is contrary to prophecy, as we're going to read in Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. 
Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 13. For Belial was in great wrath against Isaiah by reason of this vision, and because of the exposure wherewith he had exposed Samael, and because through him the going forth of the beloved from the seventh heaven had been made known. So he showed Isaiah what all was going to come, but this book was hidden, and now I was revealing it to confirm the truth of the gospel. All right. And his transformation and his descent and the likeness into which he should be transformed, that is the likeness of man, and the persecution wherewith he should be persecuted, and the torture wherewith the children of Israel should torture him, and the coming of his twelve disciples, and the teaching, and that he should before the Shabbat be crucified upon the tree. It was before the Shabbat. Right. He did not die on Shabbat day. Right. All right. Continue. And should be crucified together with wicked men, and that he should be buried in the sepulcher. And the twelve who were with him should be offended because of him. That happened. Remember when they came to get him, the disciples ran off? Continue. Right. And the watch of those who watched the sepulcher, and the descent of the angel of the Christian church who was in the heavens, whom he will summon in the last days, and that the angel of the Holy Spirit and Michael and the chief of the holy angels on the third day will open the sepulcher. So we see who came down. Those two men that were shining in linen, when you read the New Testament, when they came to the sepulcher, it was Gabriel, the angel of the Holy Spirit, and it was Michael, the chief of the holy angels, on the third day that opened that sepulcher. So you can see how Isaiah saw these things. And the beloved sitting on their shoulders will come forth and send out his twelve disciples. Continue reading there. This is verse what, 18. Yeah, Ascension of Isaiah 3, 17 to 20. Okay, please. This is verse 18. All right. And they will teach all the nations and every tongue of the resurrection of the beloved. And those who believe in his cross will be saved. And, and in his ascension into the seventh heaven once he came. And that many who believe in him will speak through the Holy Spirit. And many signs and wonders will be wrought in those days. And those things did come to pass in the times of the disciples. And this was to show how what Isaiah had seen was indeed true because they came to pass. I want to bring some clarity with the quote-unquote word about testament, right? Testament, right. covenant. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9 and 16, it says, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a tester. So Yache, to make it a testimony or to make it a new testament, there had to be death. There had to be blood, right? Yes. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testor liveth. So the testimony is that he died. He actually had to die to make it complete or actually make it be established or enforced. So without him dying, there would be no New Testament. And that also shows the false doctrine of the religion called Mohammedism. Right. Because in that religion, it says that he didn't die. Right. So, you see, when in the truth of the gospel, it confounds all the religions of the world and brings out all the fallacies just by the truth. So, you continue reading it. Says, Wherefore, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Right. right. So, you can see that just like Yache, he had to die, his blood had to be shed. The Old Testament was the same. It had to be blood for it to be a testament. Because it was a shadow of the good things to come. Right. So, I think we read 19. So, I just wanted to throw that little part in there. That was essential. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right, brothers and sisters, on the next one, uh, I will, and we get to go into actually seeing the events come to pass and looking at the timestamps to see that it happened in seven days, just like the scriptures said. All right, I'll be magnified. Jalam. Jalam.